And of course, we want to give really first because I think the primary purpose for what God has entrusted to us is for our giving. And then we owe, and we have to be careful here, especially when it comes to debt, because as I mentioned, this is one of the primary ways that we presume upon the future when we are encumbered by debt. And we need to be on our guard there, seeking to only use debt for, uh, you know, productive uses. I would say that's where the economic return is greater than the economic cost. Think appreciating assets like businesses and uh, homes, not cars, certainly not consumer spending. So we avoid debt wherever possible and we seek to get out of debt over time. And then we grow and that's our savings. We want to save appropriately there because the key for both live and grow is to start with the question, how much is enough? Now, you might be saying, well, it'd be great if I could get to the point where I had to ask how much is enough. I'm just trying to make ends meet, and I get that. And that's where a lot of folks find themselves, and that's why we need to be uh, really careful about living on a spending plan and having our expenses dialed in around a plan that reflects our values and our priorities, of course, meets our obligations. And in different seasons of life, that's going to be much more challenging than others. That's where we trust the Lord uh, for his provision and we accept what he's provided and live within that. Now, it doesn't mean we don't try to improve that. Maybe, you know, get a better paying job or maybe work uh, with an, 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 you know, seek out a second job or uh, try to reduce spending. I mean, we need to do our part, but at the end of the day, God is our provider. And then we need to ask the question, how much is enough for our savings, both for the short term, and that's where we recommend three to six months for your emergency funds, and then for the long term. What is our ultimate goal for accumulation? How much are we trying to save over the long haul? And what is that number? It's not about the mindless accumulation of wealth. There really should be a financial finish line. So as we go back to God's word, we see the big ideas and themes around each of these areas. And then we want to live accordingly. Again, live, give, owe, and grow. Uh, hopefully that's helpful to you as you think about how you apply uh, God's counsel and wisdom to the actual decisions and choices you're making today. Uh, Jody's in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota today. Go ahead. Hi, thank you for what you do, number one. Absolutely, thank you so much for what you do for everyone. I appreciate Absolutely. what you do for all. I mean it. Well, thank you for so, saying that. I mean it with all my heart. So I'm going to retire in four, five years, excuse me, or four, close to it. At 67 at full retirement, I have enough credits. My husband is seven years younger. So do I have to wait till I'm 74 to claim his 50%? Or can I claim what I have coming, which is less, plus I have 14 years of para? public uh, employee retirement, but it's not equal to his 50%. So do I have to wait till 74 to get it and start and get the 50% of his and I take mine at 67, whatever it is with the para, and then when I turn, when he turns for retirement, I'd be 74, and then I get his, the, the difference. And then what if he retires early and he doesn't go to his, quote, full retirement rate, do I then get less even though I retired at the full retirement age? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. All right, so you can begin taking your benefits at 67 and you wouldn't have them reduced at all because you would have been at least full retirement age. And of course, if you wait, um, you can increase that benefit. Now, with regard to a spousal benefit, uh, you uh, would not be able to take your spousal benefit um, until he does. And so he has to walk through that door first and he can't do that until 62. Um, and so when he does, uh, then if you are at least full retirement age, your spousal benefit would not be reduced. Uh, his would, but yours would not. So uh, you could begin taking yours at full retirement age and then switch to the spousal benefit at its higher once he begins taking his benefits, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I was hoping for a and you did that for me. Thank you so much. It's um, tough wondering and have this big question mark. I know. Thanks to you. Thank you, you so know, much. I you're welcome, it. Jody. Absolutely. We appreciate your call today. Lord bless you. Uh, let's go to Pennsylvania. Bronnie, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Um, I'm 66 and I sold the house that I have. And uh, I'm getting $70,000 that I can do something with it. I don't know if I should just rent an apartment or buy a real small house. I don't have saving account. I don't have emergency funds. I don't have nothing like that because I live check by check with my job. So what should I do? 
Are you renting something right now? I, I just, yeah, I just started renting one month ago, but everything was started with a house. Okay. And if you were to buy something else equivalent to what you're currently renting, how much would you be looking to spend? Uh, with the, where I live, it's very expensive, not more than 299 Okay, so 300000 would be roughly what you'd be looking to spend. Uh, so let's do this. That's helpful background information. What I'm going to do is take a quick break here. Bruni, you hold the line. When we come back, we'll talk about whether that would leave you enough for emergency savings because we don't want to deplete everything and whether or not you'd be able to afford that mortgage payment. So we'll tackle that just around the corner. Now, just a quick reminder as we head into this next break, don't call in. Our team is not here today, but we have some great questions we've lined up in advance. Those will be coming just on the other side of this break. A quick reminder, if you'd like to support our work, you can do that on our website, faith5.com. Just click give. More to come on Faith and Finance right after this. We'll be right back. We are grateful to Chessman Wealth Strategies for their support of faith and finance. Their mission is to help clients make smart choices with their money so they can worry less, enjoy life, and ultimately become good stewards of the resources God has entrusted to them. Chessmanwealth.com. That's Chessmanwealth.com. The phone number is 214-572-2120. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr, president of the American Pastors Network, a growing national network of pastors committed to the authority of Scripture and preaching the whole counsel of God. We believe biblical obedience is the foundation for revival and impacting our culture for Christ is our duty. For too long, the pulpits of America have been silent on the important issues such as marriage and family and assault on our liberty. Join us in the battle for truth on Stand in the Gap weekend, Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. on American Family Radio and visit us at AmericanPastorsNetwork.org. Faith and Finance is grateful for support from SoundMind Investing. If you have money in an investment account, you know sometimes the stock market can seem like a roller coaster. But it's possible to enjoy both profit and peace of mind as a do-it-yourself investor, no matter what's happening in the market. A short video webinar about that is available at soundmindinvesting.org. Financial wisdom for living well. Soundmindinvesting.org. Have you downloaded the Faith by app yet? You need to do that today, because this is going to make your life easier. Yes, you can manage your money through the in-app envelope feature, but also plan out future goals. I want to buy a house in five years, and I'm on track to do that. Here's also what I like. You can connect with people around the country. It's like social media, but better. Ask a question, get an answer, and share what you're learning about money and investing. So why don't you grab your phone right now and download the Faith by app? When you hear this, this is American Family News. You know what follows is the truth. Your news from a Christian perspective. Hundreds of teachers are going to have to walk into that school building and they are forced to swallow political ideology that in many cases violates their very faith and conscience. If you miss it at the top of the hour, American Family News podcasts are available at AFN.net and sign up for our daily news brief at AFN.net. Paying too much for health insurance? Frustrated by high deductibles and increasing premiums? There's a better way. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is a Christian community delivering a faith-based solution to the high cost of healthcare. Take control over your healthcare costs with a program from CHM that could save you up to 40%. Learn more and enroll today at chministries.org slash faithfi. That's chministries.org slash faithfi. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. Great to have you with us today on Faith and Finance here on American Family Radio. This is the program where we apply God's wisdom to your financial decisions and choices, help you make decisions in light of God's word as you're a steward of God's resources. Uh, before the break, we were talking to Bruni in Pennsylvania. She recently sold her home. She's got about 70000 available. She's wondering if she should buy a very small house or just continue to rent, which she's doing now. She has no savings and no emergency. And 
emergency fund. And Bernie, I think the key here is that whatever we do when you come out of it, whether you just continue to rent and keep that 70,000 in savings or you buy something, I wanna make sure we do two things. Number one is when you buy something, I don't want you to buy too much house and come out with a mortgage payment that's gonna be one you can't afford and it's gonna create you know, real pressure on you that you don't need. So we wanna keep that you know, in line. And then secondly, I want to make sure that you do have emergency savings because there's going to undoubtedly be things that will come out of left field that you didn't anticipate. So let's say, you know, we were to plan on you trying to come out of this with, you know, at least $10,000 in, in savings. So that would mean you'd have 60,000 available. You know, I'm thinking that um, you'd probably only want to buy, because I believe you said you could go up to 1200 a month and still make your budget work somewhere between a thousand and twelve hundred a month that means that you could really only buy a house for probably two hundred to two hundred and ten thousand and then plan to put down fifty five to maybe sixty thousand of the seventy that you got from the previous home sale and my just quick estimate is that would result in you know with a, a mortgage of about one hundred and fifty five thousand that would result in a, a, a mortgage payment, principal interest, um, taxes, and insurance, so including the property taxes and the insurance of, a, of just under 1200 a month. And so the question would be, could you find that home or condo or something for around 200 to 210 at the most, you know, where you'd put down that 55,000 or so, um, you know, and, and have the 15,000 left in savings that would keep you under 1200 a month. If so, great, then yeah, you could certainly consider buying something. Um, if not, you probably want to continue to rent because again, I just don't want you to buy something that is going to result in a mortgage payment that's going to be hard, you know, difficult for you to maintain. Does that all make sense? That all makes sense, yes, indeed. Okay, very good. So I think your next step perhaps is to connect with a, a real estate agent there in Pennsylvania and just talk through what options you have around the $200,000 uh, price range. Maybe go look at a few of them and think and pray. Ask the Lord to give you some wisdom and uh, see if you could find something that would fit. If so, I think as long as you stay in that range and keep your mortgage payment, including the taxes and the insurance, as close to $1,000 as you can, get a good feel for what the, the utilities are going to be as well, you know, the electric and, and the water and so forth, um, you know, then I think that, you know, would at least give you an option to buy something you can afford and still have the emergency savings after it's all said and done. Uh, thank you for calling today. If we can assist you further, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, let's go to uh, Ellen in Youngstown, Ohio. Hi, Ellen, go ahead. Hi, um, uh, about two or three years yeah, you know, so I bonds kind of fit into that category of in time horizon of investment from one to three years. Because if you're less than a year, you can't do an I bond because you've got to hold them for a year. And if you're more than three years, you're probably going to do better elsewhere. The other thing we've got going on is, you know, I bonds were very attractive a few years ago. They got up to 9%. They're not attractive any longer because today they're at 428 and this fall, coming November the 1st, they're gonna, you know, be, uh, they're gonna come out with the new rate and it's gonna continue to fall because as inflation comes down, and it clearly is, um, the I-bond rate, the composite portion that's, te that's pegged to CPI is gonna bring that rate down. So I think this is a good I you know, time, as long as you're beyond a year, to go ahead and cash them out. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and lock the money into a CD if you had 12 months to put the money aside, which you can still get at 5%, that would give you a better rate of return, you know, for the next 12 months than you're undoubtedly gonna get in the I bonds because they're already below that today and they're gonna be even further below that in November. Does that make sense? 
Oh, great. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, so to find that CD rate that, you know, the most attractive one that's available today, I'd just go to bankrate.com, click on CDs, and you'll find, you know, one-year CDs, perhaps even a 18-month CD, uh, certainly higher than 4.5%, probably something closer to 5 So thanks for calling today. We appreciate you being on the program. Uh, let's go to uh, Alabama. Hi, Tyler. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for your show and program. So sure. helpful to me, I'm sure. Um, I have an adult child who is autistic, and uh, uh, he struggles uh, with money as far as, when I say money, it's not spending of money. It just has, like, no value to him. He doesn't understand uh, the value of money, I guess you could say. I don't know how to explain that. Anyway, do I need to set up a, I was thinking about setting up some sort of trust fund. How do I go about that? Is that strictly a real process or a, is there a separate thing for a trust fund to help yes. him uh, after we pass? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, Tyler, and I, I appreciate you raising this because clearly you want to make sure he has what he needs and that there's guardrails around it that gives him access to it uh, based on certain conditions, perhaps naming a trustee to release it uh, appropriately, but also not prevent him from getting access if he qualified for it you know, in the future for the government benefits, such as the, you know, supplemental security income, Medicaid, state funding, other types of things. Um, you know, the simple way to do this would be through uh, an ABLE account, which is A-B-L-E, which uh, uh, is was put in place several years ago. It's kind of built on the chassis of 529 plans for college, but it's for those that have special needs. It's easier to set up than the special needs trust um, but you can't, you know, put uh, as much in it. Um, you know, so for an ABLE account, uh, you would be able to put in only uh, the 18000 a year that you could normally put in for uh, a, an annual gift exemption. And then uh, I believe the max is about a half a million dollars. Whereas the, the other option, which is kind of the big brother to the ABLE account, would be a special needs trust. And, you know, that you could put in as much as you want. Um, and, you know, it would cost you probably a few thousand dollars to set it up, but it's gonna give you, you know, the ability to have all the controls that you could possibly need in how that money's dispersed. And again, uh, make sure that he preserves his ability to access, um, you know, the government assistance when you all are gone. So what I would do as a next step, Tyler, is connect with a, uh, an attorney who specializes in these types of things. Any estate planning attorney could do it, um, but some specialize in the special needs area. But what you'd be asking about is a special needs trust, or if that's not necessary, an ABLE account, A-B-L-E. And if you need a referral to an estate planning attorney, you can contact a certified kingdom advisor there in Alabama. Just go to our website, faithfi.com, click on find a professional. Any one of those CKAs could refer you to a godly estate planning attorney who can walk you through all of this. But this is the time to think about it now. Go ahead and get it in place, and uh, it'll be there for your son's future. Thanks for your call today. We'll be right back. Our thanks to certified kingdom advisor Wade Chessman, president and wealth advisor, and his team at Chessman Wealth Strategies in Dallas for their support of faith and finance. Their goal is to help their clients expand their understanding of biblical financial principles and how to implement them. The website is chessmanwealth.com. The phone number is 214-572-2120. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.
a certified kingdom advisor in your area, visit faithby.com and click find a CKA. We are grateful for support from Timothy Plan. Are you unsure if your investments align with your values? Well, for nearly three decades, the goal of the Timothy Plan has been to guide clients on a biblically responsible journey with its mutual funds and ETFs. More information is available at timothyplan.com. Investing includes risk, including possible loss of principal. Before investing, carefully consider funds, investment, objectives, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. Read carefully before investing. Mutual funds distributed by Timothy Partners LTD and ETFs distributed by Foresight Fund Services LLC. solution for you. It's the FaithFi app. It's what Julie and I use to manage our budget. We have connected all of our accounts, our transactions download automatically. That's right. Uh, whether it's dance uh, lessons for the girls or clothes shopping or going out to dinner, they all just come in and the system knows exactly what envelopes each of those transactions go to. It learns our habits and then when we open it at any moment, we can see what's left in each envelope uh, just right there on the palm of our hand. It's called the FaithFi app. It's built on Larry Burkett's tried and true envelope system, but in a simple, easy to use smartphone interface. Check it out today when you go to your app store and search for FaithFi, or you can download it on our website, faithfi.com. Just click app. You can learn all about it. All right, let's head back to the phones. Uh, Orlando, Florida is where we're going next. Hi, June. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? I sure can. Hello. Okay, good. Yes. So thank you for taking my call. Um, a couple years ago, I had a, uh, over $100,000 in a money market, and somebody convinced me to take it out and put it in annuities. Well, it's gone down all the time since then, and mm. now they're trying to tell me to take it out of the annuity 10000 at a time and put it in T-bills. Bonds or whatever they call it, and I was wondering if that's a good thing because uh, <coughs> I told yeah. everybody last time and it turned out not to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, how much do you have in that annuity today? Do you know? Uh, Eighty-nine thousand. Okay, and you said it's been declining in value. Yeah, it went from a hundred thousand down to eighty-nine thousand. Interesting. And you haven't taken any money out? No. Okay. I would want to know more about that. I think you ought to just inquire as to how did it lose money. I mean, normally, uh, you know, if, if a an annuity is underperforming, you typically either want to surrender it uh, or roll it over. But I'd, I'd want to know why it's underperforming. Um, you know, usually, even if it's a variable annuity that's pegged to a market index, usually there's a floor where you can't lose money. Um, but it would be interesting just to know why it's lost, you know, more than 10% of its value. Nevertheless, I would agree with you. I think rolling it out is a good thing. Do you know if that money went in pre-tax or was it after-tax dollars? Um, I took it out of my money market and signed it to him, so I paid taxes okay. on it before I put it in my money market. Okay, got it. Yeah, and because it's lost value, you shouldn't have a taxable event. You'd want to always check with your CPA on that. What is this money earmarked for? Is this long-term money for retirement? I'm already retired, and I paid off my house like you guys talk about, and okay. so I was just putting my mortgage payment in this money market instead of wasting it. Yeah. So yeah. it just built up and built up and built up. Got it. Okay, very good. So you're not living off of this at all. You don't really need it right now. It's just there if you needed it down the road. Right. Correct. Okay. Yeah, very good. Um, so what I would probably do is connect with an advisor who could manage this for you outside of an annuity product. I agree. Uh, you know, if this is money you don't need, putting it largely in bonds makes sense. And you know, treasury bills, bonds, and notes could be a part of that. I'd probably stay on the shorter end uh, of the duration, so the short-term bonds and notes, not the you know long-term T bills. But um, you know, I think that has a place. You could have a mix of uh, treasury uh, bills. You could have 
uh, some corporate bonds, maybe a CD or two in there. And then, you know, that would be likely maybe 60 to 70% of the portfolio. But then I think there, you know, unless you just don't want this, I think there's a reason to consider maybe having 30% or so in stocks uh, where you've got a growth component to this. Because if this is money you don't need, the goal is to first of all, hang on to it, not see it lose value over time, but second, to grow it because we want to offset the effects of inflation, which we've seen you know, really more acutely in the last couple of years. Um, and I think one way to do that is to have a small portion of stocks with a larger portion of bonds. The other thing is, June, that the bonds are going to do well as the interest rates come down and the Federal Reserve has all but said they're going to start lowering rates next month in September. So. What I would do is probably connect with a certified kingdom advisor there in Orlando, somebody who could set up an account, help you roll the annuity money in, um, understand any tax implications, hopefully there aren't any, and then redeploy that money into a portfolio that makes sense, that's properly diversified, that has the ability to grow uh, in the future, and then you'd have full access to it down the road if you needed it for long-term care or whatever reason. And a good portion of that, again, could be in a very conservative position in bonds and in money market and, and CDs, that type of thing. Does that make sense? Sure. So <laughs> the question is, I, I know that
to make sure that you understand, okay, what is this gonna cost me to get out of and into another home? And how much am I really gonna save by downsizing? And actually go out and, and do some light work to see you know, what is it you wanna to spend to free up the money to buy the next car? And is there that home out there you know, that, that would allow you to get into what's gonna meet your needs and truly free up and give you, you know, some, some surplus left over at the end of the day. Um, and if at the end of that process, by looking at all the transaction costs and going out and finding what it is you buy that is truly a downsized home that's less expensive and you believe you can do all of it, then sure, uh, you could lower your overall expenses because hopefully you could bring your property insurance down. Um, you could bring your uh, taxes down. Uh, or excuse me, uh, homeowner's insurance down. Um, and I know how challenging that is in Florida. Uh, not to mention maybe lesser expense on the utilities. So if all of that pans out, then yes, uh, you know, it, it could be a, a good option to consider replacing the vehicle. I think with regard to the car, uh, do you have a loan on that car it, it currently? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you'd be looking to sell it, pay off the loan, and then get into something less expensive there? Okay, so why are you looking to replace it? You feel like it's something that you bought too much and you can't afford it? anti-Semitism during his speech this morning before the body. Standing in this podium 40 years ago, I told the sponsors of that outrageous resolution to expel Israel, gentlemen, check your fanaticism at the door. Today, I tell President Abbas and all of you who would shamefully support that resolution, check your fanaticism at the door. The singling out of the one and only Jewish state continues to be a moral stain on the United Nations. It has made this once respected institution contemptible in the eyes of decent people everywhere. But for the Palestinians, this UN house of darkness is home court. They know that in this swamp of anti-Semitic bile, there's an automatic majority willing to do, demonize the Jewish state on anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any false charge, any outlandish allegation can muster a majority. In the last decade, there have been more resolutions passed against Israel in this hall at the UN General Assembly than against the entire world combined. 
Damage assessments are underway throughout the western coast of Florida following Helene's rampage Thursday night. The hurricane is now impacting Georgia and the Carolinas. Evan Brown reports. Power outages, stranded people, and damaged homes and businesses are expected to be tallied this morning as first responders begin to move through Florida's Gulf Coast towns and cities from Fort Myers up to north of Tampa Bay, all which took the brunt of wind and storm surge over many hours. Helene's official landfall where its eye came ashore was south of the town of Perry in the state's Big Bend region. Helene has since weakened to tropical storm status, meaning its sustained winds are slower, but it is still large and dropping lots of rain across Georgia and the Carolinas, where flash flood warnings are in effect and some evacuations are urged. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says residents who lost their electricity will get it back soon. Those restoration efforts are, are underway. They've been really been gone going on the entire time as as people have lost power and so i think you're going to see some uh, some progress on that throughout today the secret service faced questions from a bipartisan house task force investigating the trump assassination attempts pennsylvania republican congressman mike kelly reacting to funding added toward the secret service in the recently passed continuing resolution the answer to everything isn't always more money Sometimes the answer is we need the personnel in the right place at the right time and make sure whatever you deploy that you're deploying it to the right place for the right reasons. There's a warning being issued about the ideology being taught at New York City's New School University. Bob Kellogg reports. New School is offering a course that puts eco-feminism and eco-Marxism as viable alternatives to our current political structures according to campus reform. Meg Kilgannon of the Family Research Council warns these students are going to be future managerial elites. And so they need to be well versed in leftist ideology and um, Marxist economics and social economics. But it's fair to assume that if you're going to teach a course like this, you are symp more sympathetic to Marxist ideology than you are to capitalist economics. Phil Gannon says Christian universities should not sit idly by as these future Leninists prepare to enter the corporate world. We need to make sure that, that our, our Christian universities are prepared to uh, uh, offer courses that are, of course, the opposite of ideology so that there is a Christian worldview represented in every place. Kilgannon says Christians should pray for students who are away from home for the first time who are confronting radical ideas. I'm Bob Kellogg. The S&P 500 was up 0.1%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 141 points. And the Nasdaq Composite rose 0.2%. For American Family News, I'm Rusty Keaton. Tired of campaign ads? Candidate rhetoric and a mailbox full of flyers? Are you thinking of sitting out this election? Don't do it. As Christians, it's our responsibility to be salt and light. How can we influence our nation for godly values if we don't make our voices heard? Show your support for candidates who share our biblical values by voting wisely. Use iVoterGuide.com as a free tool to help you identify those candidates. Be a good steward of your vote on November the 5th. Vote wisely with iVoterGuide.com. This is Trivia Friday. The number to call with your question or your answer to a question is 888-589-8840. At the rate of inflation, what would the $6 million man be worth today? That's a good question. question. But the lady sent me the wrong shirt. Boy, I got had Huey, Dewey, and Louie on the front. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? At least he didn't say, you know, Larry, Moe, and Curly. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to yeah, Trivia no, no, Friday, no, no, right no, here no, on no, American no, Family no, Radio. No, 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 no. Today is Friday, September the 27th, 2024. Thank you for listening to AFR. I'm Tim Wildman with Ed Vitagliano. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Tim. And JJ Jasper. Good morning. Great to be here. Well, uh, we got we got a lot of fun today and do a lot of learning. But our our uh, prayers and thoughts, as they say, are with our friends in uh, Florida and South Georgia, and well, Georgia, and I don't know. I Anywhere in the I past. I, yes, I haven't Alina. heard the latest, but I know that Georgia was ravaged last night. Yeah, uh, already some fatalities, and that's just heartbreaking. Pray for the families, pray for those in the path, and pray against those tornadoes that typically spin off hur hurricanes. 
been a lot of lot of flooding going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we all, you know, every week when we do this show, we have fun and laugh a lot, and we. But there's something going on in the world somewhere that's somewhere. that's uh, tragic, and we just don't want to be insensitive to that. That's right. Saying. Eight days of hope uh, on the ready, poised to head that way, and they're going to be taking their. Uh, food truck they've already got thousands and thousands of meals prepared we talked to steve tiber this morning yeah and then they're going to be there with their uh, um, tarps and chainsaws and everything and ready to help what a wonderful ministry you can find out more at eight days of hope.com absolutely so what are we doing today here is this first time callers or not it is not just regular uh trivia friday i say regular it's going to be spectacular we know that but it's not first time callers. So if you have not been on the air with us in the last two months, last eight weeks, feel free to call in and try to get on the show. The number to call is 888-589-8840. We do ask that you be 11 years old or older to call. Again, if you've not been on with us in the last two months, today could be your day. Just call 888-589-8840. We apologize to our listeners. Last Friday, we had internet problems here uh, in our part of Tupelo, uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, where our flagship station is. And so folks could not call in. And uh, that's part of the that's part of the whole thing we do here. So uh, our apologies and hopefully internet will stay up and what uh, you do fine we played a uh, best, best of, of yeah. uh, whole, which is yeah, you're going to learn as much from that as you are from anything else but it wasn't a lot about show. this jj oh yeah we've got uh, we're going to ask three <laughs> questions each out of our original nine questions one of these is going to be a mystery question if you happen to land on it and answer it correctly you'll hear this sound Oh, oh cowbell. Cow that means you're going to win a nice new, this is something we've just had for a few uh, months now, the AFR ball cap. Uh, really nice, got a leather patch on the front, black and gray. Uh, this really is nice. And if you don't win one today, we encourage you to check out our store, DVDs, books, jackets, and this nice hat is there. So yeah, your chance to win something today, as well as learn and laugh and have some just have a good time. Resources.afa.net. If you want to buy uh, a, a, one of these hats this for yourself, uh, resources.afa.net. And as soon as you run out of these hats, we are working on the bobbleheads. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the Learning University is a professor's bobbleheads. No, oh, no, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say the uh, uh, Trivia Friday three-piece suit. Uh, leisure suits will be available uh, for those of you from the 70s. So uh, no, no bobblehead, polyester. No, yeah, the good, good old polyester. <laughs> you believe people wore them? <laughs> There's the deal. When I was sitting there playing with the clockers, watching my lava lamp, uh, sitting there in my leisure suit, I said, "That's a great day to be alive." <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did. I, I, I wore. I wore the three-piece suit and the leisure suit. You weren't a lounge lizard, were you? I, I wasn't old enough. But if I had been older, yeah, I might have been. I'm not even hey, sure what that is, but that doesn't sound good. How you doing? Hey, guys, can I give a little shout-out? I was in Texas this past weekend. Fannin Pregnancy Center, New Life Cottage there in Bonham, Texas. The pro-life community in Bonham, mm. Texas, amazing. They exceeded the goal. And Terry got to meet her, Jim and Karen. Randy and uh, Gina, uh, Bobby Bennett, a truck driver, he came down from Wiley, Texas. His friend Arnold had been telling him for a long time about AFR. So finally he tuned in. He said, now that's all I listen to. Wow. So he drove, he drove down, he and his wife. But I got to met, meet some wonderful, wonderful people. I brought my daughter Tegan with me, nine years old. Her first time to fly, first time to be uh, in Texas. And it was just a wonderful time, and that was uh, this that was this past weekend. We've got great listeners everywhere, and I got to meet a whole lot of them last Saturday night in Texas. So, and folks, if you're listening and you've been listening for a while, you're our best advertisement. Uh, tell your friends about American Family Radio. Um, send a link to AFR.net to some of your friends via email or text. Well, a banner over their house. With an yes. airplane. Yeah, with an airplane. airplane. Pull the banner behind. Yes. Yeah. 
I think that's hey, to its point, I actually thought about that when Bobby reached out and said, hey, we're just, a, you know, we're in Wiley, Texas. We want to come to the event. He said, and he told me that story about his friend Arnold. He had just been telling him, telling him good Christian guy. They're truck drivers. And I thought, that's it. Word of mouth. You know, yes. people will help spread that. In fact, our friend, Dr. David John Johnson, he drove two hours, brought a couple of friends. He came to the banquet, and he brought the three of us some, some jalapeno uh, peanut brittle. Peanut brittle. Those are two words you don't expect to hear in a sentence. <laughs> Talk about an oxymoron. Boy, that stuff had a kick to it. Well, I just, I like the idea of flying the plane with the banner over your friends' houses. I don't know why planes that are uh, doing those chemtrails should be the only ones up there. Ah, uh, there the we air. go. We got that in yeah. this morning. <laughs> All right, let's give our. Uh, we, we, we're going to ask three questions. We ask you to call in. We already got a bank phone call calls here. Uh, uh, call in and, and answer and ask. That's uh, you know that's, that's our preference here. Yep. So uh, we ready to give our questions? All right, I'm ready. Here are my three questions. Constantinople was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. Empire for more than a thousand years. Empire. Empire. Wow, <laughs> where that came from. <laughs> For more than a thousand years, what was the name of the city before and after Apple. it was called Constantinople? Uh, second question. I said I would do these, and now I may be regretting it. Every week until the election, who were the presidential candidates in the 1984 race for the White House? Talking about the two major Political parties only, Republican and Democrat. You're going to do that all the way to November? All the way to November. And, and like I said, I'm starting to regret it. I shouldn't have started it so you can, early. You can change. That's not like a keep the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I mean, you, you want to switch off? You can go ahead and do that. Huh? You don't know me very well, do you, Tim? You're telling a, a look at the way I've uh, I've arranged my cough drop. Yes, I know. You, you think an OCD person? Oh, I know person, it is, Dan. I just don't bring it up. Yeah. Oh, you my think an OCD girl, person okay. can... Break a habit after you guys are funny. pathway. Hey, no, this is good. It really is good history. It ties in with the election season. Keep it up, Ed. And yeah. reminds people that they should be registered and they should vote. There you go. I like it. All right. And third final question. A cross between a male zebra and a female horse is called a zorse. Z O R S E. A cross, a cross between that, a what? Okay. okay. A cross between a male zebra yeah. and a female horse is called a zorse. Is that true or false? A zorse, of course. Anyway, that's, that's those Dr. are my three that's questions. That's Dr. Seuss. Right. A, I thought zorse was the guy with the big hammer. <laughs> kind of like, a, you know, through lightning bolts around. <laughs> zor. Isn't that zorse? Yeah, zor. Yeah. Zorse. Yeah. All right, here's what I've got. First question from the Bible. Which is the shortest book in the Old Testament? Which is the shortest book in the Old Testament? Second question, what is the birthstone for the month of May? What is the birthstone for the month of May? Third question, true or false, official Major League Baseball rules state that a baseball must be rubbed in the mud before 